you're capable of more things than you can ever imagine. When I started, I was really limited in my head. I was uh, underestimating myself a lot. It was uh, one of the biggest reasons to uh, don't really prospect faster in, in this sport in the beginning. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Guru Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is an impressive statics athlete, an impressive planche, one of the most, one of the strongest planches in the world. I'm happy to welcome you to the show, Jordan Stanche from Bulgaria. Thanks for that, Phil. Welcome and <laughs> hi everyone. We had some some tries in the beginning to um, yeah do the introduction right. Um, I'm happy that we're finally uh, we are finally yeah gone with the interview, and so we can kick it off with the question: How do you present yourself? At least we made it in the end. Uh, to introduce myself, okay. Um, my name is Jordan Stanchev. Um, a calisthenics uh, athlete, obviously, and um, yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, trying to train people online whenever I have the opportunity. Uh, sometimes uh, I attend some competitions to judge. Yeah, so everything has started long ago, 10 years of experience right now. Wow. Yeah, a lot of time. And um, I hope this thing will continue many more years because that's a big part of my lifestyle and it's a big part of my life. So that's for me. Well, wow, that's already a cool introduction. Something that I directly want to uh, ask. You said uh, you attend competitions as a judge right now. You don't compete anymore or maybe in the future mm. again? No, I would like to compete again, but only in static competitions because uh, I had to rethink again for uh, what type of competitions I should attend because um, um, some people know, but I have a herniated disc as diagnostic. So uh, when I make something uh, which is uh, really dynamic in in the same mean of the word, um, some kind of root move to the body and uh, my spine is feeling everything. Uh, so the statics is a little bit more comfortable to play with and my strength is there. Okay. And there there aren't so many competitions that only do statics, right? There is Burning Gate, uh, which is uh, one statics competition. Yeah, one of them. But um, still hadn't any chance to go there because uh, in 2018, they invited me. But in the same time, there was a, a World Cup in Moscow. So uh, everything was already done. So I couldn't attend there. Okay. Okay, yeah. Then uh, the hard facts. People always ask these. How old are you? I am 22 years old. 22. How heavy? Uh, like how tall first? How tall? tall? Uh, meter and uh, 83, 4. Okay. And how heavy right now? Right now, I think 72. 72 kg. Okay, cool. So quite quite tall for for a calisthenics athlete, like for statics athlete, um, definitely, um, which makes it even more impressive. But uh, we will come to this later again uh, concerning the height. Tell us the story. How did you get in touch with the sport? How was your first touch point with it? What were your goals in the beginning? My first touch with the sport was in 2011, like I said, 10 years ago. Uh, there were some uh, Bulgarian guys uh, back then. The name of their team was Explosive Force Crew. So they made the first competition in Bulgaria, a video, uh, a one big video of competition in Sofia. But I'm not living in Sofia, so I just saw it through the network. Um, then uh, I realized before even to start with street workout, I was training uh, science. Uh, um, since really young age, because um, I had my first computer really uh, later, uh, no internet, nothing. And if I was bored, I was doing just push-ups in my room. And uh, that was something I used to love to do. I had uh, two of dumbbells. I was making a biceps curls also, but just this uh, basic, uh, just these basics. And uh, that was um, during the years. Uh, and when I was 11 years old, just before to 
uh, make 12 years old. I saw these guys and I was okay, probably that is the thing I'm supposed to do because um, before to start with street workout, I tried to attend to the fitness, but uh, I'm living in a really small city uh, and my mom uh, found that and she said to me, you're too young to go to the fitness and uh, science, I know you, you put the really heavy weights uh, to start with. Uh, I won't be, mm, I won't become um, knowing you're attending there because you may affect your health. So uh, trying something else. Okay, then uh, I found uh, there is something <laughs> like parkour. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't uh, happy again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was climbing uh, the height buildings in my city again. So the answer was, <laughs> was again, no. <laughs> but I was like, okay, see this. And I'm showing uh, videos of myself back then because that was the main level. Uh, muscle ups, uh, front lever, uh, back lever. There was no plunge back then. Uh, I mean, as a massive uh, sport, uh, as a massive move. And uh, she said, okay, it seems, it seems legit. Okay, <laughs> it seems legit. <laughs> and uh, years later, she is regretting that, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because of the injuries or why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mainly. <laughs> okay. Wow. So, um, yeah, interesting. So the parkour, if, if your mother would have been like more tolerant, let's call it, or like uh, less, less careful, uh, you, you would have ended maybe as a professional, uh, I don't know, lifter or even parkour guy. I guess so, but uh, she's a caring mother, so <laughs> I can't blame her. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah, what was your goal in the beginning? Did you, like you already said, uh, that there was no planche really back in the days, um, back uh, the level mm. like was much, much lower. Um, but what was your goal? Was it the muscle up that you wanted to learn? Was it the, to get a physique or what was it? Mm, I was just working for the skills, not as uh, my physical. I mean, uh, yeah, I was uh, aiming a bit for my physique, but uh, it was more for the skill. I was trying uh, both in the same time, but moreover for the skills. Um, in the beginning, I was aiming only for the muscle ups. Before to start with any front lever, I uh, went through all the kind of muscle ups. Uh, I mean, except uh, for the one arm muscle up, I went from uh, this grip, the X grip, uh, this grip, this wide. Uh, whatever uh, is in your mind, I have done it already. <laughs> uh, and then first I tried with front lever. I understood it's harder than the back lever. So I went back into the back lever, but indeed I, uh, I've got front lever faster than the back lever, which was something strange. I don't mm -hmm. know how, probably more attempts because I was training more on the uh, on this uh, logic, more attempts and uh, back then less basics for the element itself. So yeah, um, the element for which you're putting more efforts, it will go in front of the other skills. So in the beginning, I was aiming only for the front lever. When I saw the planche, I was like, shit, no, no way, <laughs> no way to do that. And um, yeah, I started to try it many times, many, many months. Um, but if I, if I have to start again from nothing, I will do it in, in weeks, not, not in months. The, the planche? Yeah, the planche. Once you understand it, it's easy. Okay, so maybe you can share one or two secrets today. Uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, wow, that's that's uh, that's impressive. Um, 
when you say like when you understand the planche, is it the the physics behind it or like the the training method that you need? What do you mean with when you understand the planche? Uh, it's really a complex thing. Um, a lot of things are gathering uh, during your journey to achieve the planche. Uh, it's a lot of motivation. Yeah, and the beginning is the motivation. Uh, when you go close to the planche. In your opinion only, there comes the despair a bit. Uh, then uh, you try to think more uh, what you have missed, what you uh, have to do next. And uh, just by uh, eliminating your mistakes and finding your opportunities, everything comes to its place. So uh, mainly mentality with uh, a lot of thinking about the movement. Okay. Hard work also, yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, so how long did it take from the first workout ever? Let's like a street workout uh, since you get to know the sport to the first planche hold. 2011 to 2014. Oh. I guess three years from the first muscle up to the planche. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's jump into maybe some advice that you can give generally. Uh, I know that you like, uh, that you also create like personalized plans for, for athletes, uh, which is something that maybe one or like, uh, some of the listeners are interested in, but, uh, general advice, because we received a lot of questions. Yeah. Ask him what's the, what's the good way to learn the planche, uh, planche secrets, you know, like, but some, some general advice, some general information input that you can give the listeners and, and me, of course, uh, about the planche. Well, uh, everyone is, um, a different approach is suitable for different people. Many people should know that also, um, For some guys, it's uh, better to understand the planche move by a uh, uh, tech planche progression. Personally, I haven't learned the planche by this way, but uh, I learned it uh, through leans, only planche leans, because, uh, mm, for example, if I put uh, my legs on uh, some place like uh, my shoulders hate, on the same place my like my shoulders hate, um, I'm feeling... Uh, I'm feeling the hate uh, on uh, for uh, which my hate uh, for which uh, my legs should stay, and uh, then my muscle memory activates, so uh, my body is remembering the exactly position for which I'm uh, trying to simulate the planche, and then I'm trying to activate muscle by muscle, and to think is this uh, uh, is this joining in the planche. I mean, um, do you feel this muscle directly when you do a planche attempt? And I'm trying to make the same thing, but with planche leans, because it's uh, way more uh, faster and it's easier to understand uh, where to apply muscle pressure in your body. I mean, that was my way. Uh, some other guys may... Um, may be easier for them if they use rubber bands. Um, as I said, many guys uh, doubt it with only a tech planche progression, but that was my way. For everyone, is different. Wow. And along the way, did you ever feel that your height is a disadvantage? I had this moment. Um, actually, when I started, I was uh, around 15 centimeters uh, smaller. But I was training mainly outside in the beginning. So I was doing only muscle ups. And with all this hanging on the bar, probably it affected my body to grow a little bit. So, yeah, sometimes it's, uh, I, I feel it uh, because it's like to uh, tie a stick with uh, weights on your, on your legs and to say, uh, let's go to do the planche because uh, your, uh, the lever of your body will go a lot uh, backwards and you uh, you need to lean more which will require an extra strength yeah 
makes sense. And uh, did you ever lose motivation? Like uh, that you said, ah, oh, uh, I'm I'm doing parkour. I'm too tall for for uh, statics. Uh, for that, no. For that, no. In the very beginning, I mean, in the first four years, I haven't lost any kind of motivation. I was hyped as hell in every workout. In every workout, no exception. Uh, but um, later, when I was aiming to do this uh, with a professional purpose one day, um, and when injuries started to appear, and like for the last year when I had to stop six times in one year, just you train two months and then you stop, month and stop, month and stop. Uh, there's no way to don't lose motivation, but I'm trying to take myself there. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like in, in retrospect perspective nowadays, do you know what, what was the mistake? Why did you have all these injuries? Was it like genetics or was it a bad training approach or something else? Many things. Um, I was training, um, first of all, alone with no other guys alone in the city. I mean, that's not an excuse to don't research in internet. Internet is it, it's a, It's a big space for any kind of information. You can find everything, but um, there comes another factor. Uh, you're too, um, how to say, um, you're confident in yourself and you want to um, reach all the knowledge by your own. And I'm still like that in some perspective, which is a bad habit. Uh, I truly trust in some kind of information and I want to find it by myself. That's why if uh, somebody wants to know something from me, it's uh, really hard to give something uh, for free anymore because uh, it costs me really a lot for my health. And yeah, many people should know that uh, when someone is reaching a high level in something, there is something behind that. Yeah. That's uh, definitely something that's uh, like, I th I feel like it's evolving in, in street workouts. So like um, people are more and more appreciating or seeing that uh, like they can't get every question answered for free because uh, the, the, the athletes that are at the high level, they also have to make space behind uh, beside their real work or uh, coaching is their work. And so they, they also have to pay their lifestyle with it. Since when are you offering the, the plans and the coaching? Oh, nice one. Uh, hmm. I think it was in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And your goal was to, um, because like I, I can imagine you get a lot of questions. When I see the, the questions that people asked um, to, to ask you about the planche, about uh, the injuries and nutrition and everything. I can imagine that you get a lot of questions. Like, was it the step um, that you said, yeah, um, I want to make this my profession or is it uh, the goal that you, what is your goal with, with the coaching and with, the, with your lifestyle? With the coaching, my goal is one day to have my own gym and to, um, to accept many people which have... Uh, I really desire to learn something because uh, uh, I've been trying everything, almost everything. I mean, there is uh, no way some guy to try everything, but uh, almost everything uh, from dynamics to statics. And uh, I was deeply analyzing everything, so I really can't help. Or uh, if I can't, there is uh, something better even than the experience. The, the way to know how to observe it, how to look at the people movement and to tell their mistakes because you're already into the sport from long ago and uh, you would know um, what are the most common mistakes uh, in every exercise. Also, not only this, but um, yeah, I want to continue but uh, with uh, Bigger auditory also. I want to make in some workshops. Not some. I I want to visit and really many different countries. I mean, I don't want I don't really want to stop with this. That's what they want to do. Oh, that's cool. 
Mm, if you would be like, um, if you could talk to your uh, 2011 um, self, like what would you what would you tell him to do differently? One of the things will be obviously place warm up. Mm -hmm. Definitely, because many years I really skipped this, and uh, I don't know to make experiments with my health anymore. <laughs> so warm up was definitely one reason why you 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 yeah. suffered under under the the one of heart. the main reasons. Yes. Okay. Okay. Something else. Something else. You're capable of more things than you can ever imagine. Another thing. Because uh, when I started, I was really limited in my head. I was uh, seeing many people doing some things I wasn't able to do. And uh, if they uh, trained from long ago, uh, in my head was, uh, I'm supposed to train... Uh, even longer than them to achieve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, underestimating myself a lot. <sighs> yeah, it was uh, one of my, uh, one of the biggest reason to uh, don't really prospect faster in, in this sport in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Did you like more overtrain, or did you? Would you now tell yourself train more, train train harder? About that, um, in the beginning, I was overtraining a lot, really a lot. Um, in the first two years, two years, not months, it was years. It was uh, like I'm finishing with school. I'm going to the bars. I'm there. Until the night. Back home. Oh, with with friends. In the beginning, yes, there was. Um, it was interesting for them to see some new things, uh, something they can try. But uh, later, they can see it took many efforts to achieve something. Um, so, uh, one by one. They're gone because they didn't have the the high ambitions and the high goals and also the motivation uh, that you had. Yes, yes, they're not uh, ready to give the same the same amount of efforts I I have given because okay. they see my determination and they're not ready for that. And that's um, that's really impressive because um, I think. It also needs a lot of ded dedication to continue the, the sport if like your friends uh, say yeah, it's too much for me or something. Um, it, it takes dedication to stay with it. And uh, yeah, but it's something that like I see a lot of times that um, in the beginning when the motivation is high, like you really tend to overtrain like um, a lot of beginners. Um, their joints are, aren't ready. Their tendons aren't ready. Um, so they go, go in too, too much. Yeah, indeed. Uh, many preparation exercises are required in the beginning before any element you're aiming for. So in the in the first year, if somebody is really starting from from let's say nothing, like a normal uh, fitness level uh, of a, of, a, of a young young uh, guy, um, how of how often does it make sense to train per week? Until uh, his body is, uh, is adapting uh, to the pressure and the, uh, the lifestyle of the calisthenics, I guess uh, two or three times per week. Yeah. And, and not the six or seven times per week that a lot of people are doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. Like me in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I think like, like, I don't know, like, and this is where tendonitis comes from, like uh, shoulder pain, wrist pain, like everything. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, the strange is I didn't have any tenderness back then. Uh, I have it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> When I warm up and uh, I'm trying to do properly everything. What? Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs>
that's maybe the mystery of of the buddy that something like this comes 10 years after or when the buddy exactly. is saying no i don't want anymore um because also like chicken wing <laughs> muscle ups like i see people doing the the chicken wing muscle ups and they say yeah it doesn't hurt but i think like yeah but in three five four years something it will hurt if you have like the disbalance in your shoulders so like the body is telling you uh, you have uh, tortured me enough stop yeah yeah it's a, it's a warning signal mm-hmm. true um yeah let's talk about injuries um you already talked about the the herniated discs um what what injuries uh, did you have along the way and what what did you learn from them okay the first injury was in 2013 in the end of 2013 uh it wasn't from any static move but uh, i was trying some kind of dynamics you know when you are spinning around the bar just uh, with uh, some kind of wristbands all around your wrist and the bar the giant right uh it's, yeah it, the I giants think... mm-hmm. um but um I wasn't with the um, most suitable uh, bands for this purpose. It was elastic, and mm-hmm. uh, at one rate, uh, it just stuck while I was spinning around. And yeah, my finger just remaining. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I mean, it uh, it didn't cut from my arm, but there was a big hole right there. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's insane. And in a in matter of seconds, I saw how uh, the color is changing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the first thing. Um, and uh, no dynamics anymore. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> no, and I continued after that with dynamics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, after that, um, I said, okay, um, I won't use bar for. For a certain time and i will um concentrate on planche for now so uh, they removed the plaster from uh, my arm but the finger was still not in condition to train and uh, i mean especially for planche on the ground because back then i still uh, uh, didn't uh, have any parallels in my home um <sighs> So I was supposed to train on the ground, but uh, for planche, uh, many pressure was there exactly in this point uh, where I broke my finger. So I started directly with Maltese without to be able to do a straddle planche. And here I'm answering to the next of the question. Yes, you can do Maltese without to do a full planche because the things are not so strictly related and you are working more on different muscles uh, which are um, more for uh, your weight uh, for the width of uh, of the planche so i was starting directly for motis and back then uh, with the time i was uh, training both planche and motis in the same time when my finger recovered i didn't want to waste any time because uh, I was already aiming for the competitions and yeah, no time, as I said, in my opinion. Okay, the next um, injury was uh, because of a pure stupidity. Oh, how to say it? Imagine a distance, uh, six meters, um, like uh, I jumped from a place with the same height like my desk. There was a ground from below and I was supposed to grab a bar from this distance. Okay, I grabbed the bar, but I couldn't remain grabbed for the bar. So I fell on the ground and uh, um, okay, my leg was still bent and I di- directly fell on my leg and uh, it just cracked. Um, I mean, if you imagine your leg uh, in this position, like like it's normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like for the gymnastics move, oh. in this position. Yeah, oh. and I, my body weight just fell on it. Uh, at least it was only a leg. So mm-hmm. I continued with statics <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. it recovered. That was the second injury. 
the next injury was I think from from backflip. Yeah, again the same leg, but on a higher place. So I was supposed to do nothing for one month because um, I had only to lay because I broke uh, this uh, tight bone, the most uh, hard bone to break in the whole body. I broke it. And uh, if they had to make me a surgery, they had to uh, break my spine. I mean, mm. there, just to make the surgery. So uh, I was so I was supposed only to lay in my bed and uh, to go to the toilet. Wow. Luckily, uh, I just had the uh, exams for to finish the school. So I was focusing only on the studying. Yeah. And that's, I think, our that I think are the main injuries. Well, so you don't really like your legs um, as it, as it sounds like. Uh... It sounds like that. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah but like, uh, like I, I respect that you can laugh about that. Um, and uh, like, it really sounds like, like bad things, but um, yeah. Mm. It seems that you're like, you're not mad at yourself or something. Um, oh, I'm not. Um, you can learn something from, the bad situations more than from the good ones. True. Yeah. That's true. That's a good attitude. Um, yeah. Training schedule. People asked, what does your training look like today? How does your schedule look like? Mm, it really depends. <clears throat> Because, um, let's say, it. I'm trying to um, switch between between a uh, light and a uh, uh, height intensive workout uh, and heavy workout. I mean, height intensive and heavy in one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm remaining one day in the week for basics also for uh, the wall body. Uh, legs, pull-ups, dips, everything. Um, if I um, do only a light workout, Uh, I'm trying to do a preparation of exercises uh, for the for the next heavy workout. Sometimes it's right in the next day. Sometimes uh, I may over I I may overdid it, so uh, I'm doing one day of pause, and uh, then is the heavy workout. Usually I train um, approximately four or five times per week right now. Um, and yeah that's it okay what do you think of complete deload weeks um, that was also a question complete deload weeks depending from the athlete I, I have never done that if I have to be honest so like you are not doing complete deload weeks but you're doing light, light workouts right mm -hmm. exactly And the, the reason of the light workouts is active recovery or like what, what's what's the main purpose of a light workout? It's mainly to um, it's mainly to stretch uh, my tendons and muscles before uh, before the main load in the next workouts. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, diet. What does your diet look like? Do you eat a, a healthy? Um, do, yeah. Mm -hmm. About eating healthy. Most of the time, yes, because uh, I'm living in a small city, as I said, and uh, here we have an opportunity to produce uh, a natural food by our own. Uh, so yeah, the our food in my family, uh, which we're eating every day, it's uh, most of all natural. <sighs> so um, I don't need any kind of diets because of that. Also, genetics. Mm. it's really hard for me to gain any kind of weight, even with the protein. I'm using it, no effects. I'm trying it with different methods, still nothing. Uh, or if I see something, um, there, is, uh, there is a case when I have to travel and uh, again, something about myself. I have a really nervous stomach. And when I travel, it uh, refused to take any kind of food. 
So yeah, uh, the topic with the eating for me it's really difficult. Okay. I always admire like um, the the people who eat like the the self grown food or like uh, food uh, like vegetables etc. from from really from the landscape because like uh, we're in a city here and you always only get uh, the the tomatoes which uh, taste like water and mm -hmm, like exactly. every <laughs> and like when <laughs> I when when you go like to a landscape and you eat like fresh vegetables uh, from real ground i would say uh, they they taste like something and uh, yeah, do you, do you think taste. yeah do you think this makes a big uh, big difference in in uh, minerals and uh, like in yes. nutrition values yes, because uh, they grow in uh, natural conditions while uh, you don't know how it's produced the other thing yeah When you say like you live in a small city, what does small mean? How many inhabitants does it have? Um, around uh, 6,000 people in the city. So 6,000. Okay. And how far are you away from, from Sofia? 260 kilometers. Okay. For Bulgaria, it's a lot because uh, our roads are, are not in the great condition. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, so you're not like, uh, are you regularly visiting the, the guys in the in the gym like there, like the, the people from Sofia? Uh, I thought I'm going uh, more often to Sofia because uh, I'm visiting my girlfriend uh, and we're seeing each other really rare. And uh, that's the main reason why I'm going to Sofia. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, and you have your dogs. Like uh, I always see them in in your stories. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the they are they are really young, right? Uh, puppies. Yeah. Four months. Wow, that's cool. That's uh, something that's really cool. Also, if you live like uh, in a, in a small city where you have some space uh, for them, that's uh, that's really yeah cool. They are afraid. The garden is devastated. Yeah. <laughs> Um, coming back to nutrition, um, you said that you take uh, protein, like in general, your, your uh, opinion about, about supplements. About supplements. Um, uh, uh, in my case, they're mainly helping because, uh, because of my fast metabolism, I can't rely a lot of, a lot to the food because I have an extremely fast metabolism. No matter how much I eat, there is no matter. And uh, no matter is it a junk food or uh, just uh, just sweets, no, it's nothing. Oh. Okay, so like um, if I can can sum that up already in your interview, it's really plant advice, um, recovery advice, like uh, injuries, etc. Like everything, how you say it depends on the person. So you're like really somebody who is looking individually at every um, athlete that you have in coaching or like as a friend and you have to, to um, yeah, see what fits for everybody. So is it true that your general advice for somebody wanting to improve as, as a human being in calisthenics, etc.? really to test a lot of things to tr find his the the right method for himself let it be nutritious yes, yes. Uh, for the nutrition currently no uh, i'm uh, making only this um, the routines only just with exercises in them but um, yeah before to make anything uh, i'm asking the uh, people to send me a video with the element which they want to improve or they want to learn And uh, based on that, I'm uh, I'm starting to think what it's most sweet, more suitable for them, in what proportions, proportions like sets and reps, uh, because there is uh, not any universal program for uh, any people. You cannot uh, give the same thing to everyone. That's that's not allowed. My personal opinion. Yeah. Totally understandable. Um... When you see, when you look into the future, where do you see the, the future of our sport? Where do you see the, the future uh, of calisthenics and street workout? I think there is a big future in calisthenics actually because uh, it's a really free sport with many different alternatives. 
a lot of knowledge is already in the internet. You can do everything by your own. You can learn everything by your own. Or there are already a, a lot of experienced athletes um, in different uh, ends of the world, if we can say it like that. Um, and uh, street workout can be connected with many different sports because, um, for example, I was trying to uh, combine kick kickboxing with uh, street workout also. And um, um, because the coach there is uh, my uncle in the city and uh, seeing, seeing some different um, exercises, how he's uh, structuring the exercise one after another. I mean, one, uh, one to be uh, extremely quick just to keep your breath and to keep the endurance and uh, the another part in the same exercise just to uh, just to keep uh, this your strain to increase by its own naturally i was thinking about that and uh, trying to implement the same thing about uh, my programs and to try like to make super sets like not super sets like combos with basics uh, but combining strength and endurance in one yeah that's true like um that's what i like about calisthenics and street workout as well it's a really functional sport it will help you um in combat sports uh, as you said uh, when you need like explosive strength or like the the straight arm strength is also uh, helpful in a lot of sports so um yeah definitely um what are your goals uh, this year what can we uh, expect from you this year <clears throat> stay healthy and no injuries that's the main goal um like for achievements with uh any of skills um i'm still in, in process okay cool yeah we're coming to an end of the interview we still have some quick questions quick answers at the end okay. what do you prefer pizza or burger pizza pizza <laughs> uh, maybe a bad question but are you a dog or a cat person dog dog <laughs> um, do you have a favorite location for holidays or somewhere that you definitely want to go Malty. Maltese. i mean um, something uh, personally for me I, i hate the sea if uh, someone is saying holiday um, they say let's go to the sea no <laughs> two or three days okay but not more well wow. okay uh yeah what are some athletes that inspire you in, in your workouts and your motivation i mean one by one through the timeline or just one no if you have a, a few a timeline is good okay um some unknown guys from bulgaria who currently they're not uh, training One bake off is one of them. Uh, then uh, Zev Zakaveli, when I saw his videos, can go for King also. Next, um, it was Nikita Nisimov and Vladimir Sadkov from Russia. <sighs> The end, myself. Cool. Cool. Um, do you have a favorite book that you want to recommend? <sighs> favorite book hmm. no i think um, you can take information from many different sources so um from any source you can find something useful and from any other source you can find uh, something more useful but uh, more of more of the things i'm finding it's uh, a lot of uh, just information just to be there okay um, do you have a favorite movie? Favorite movie? Mm. Well, be easier if I say an anime, but okay. Um, favorite movies, uh, Never Back Down, for example, and Undisputed. Okay, Never Back Down and Undisputed. Okay. Um, yeah, last question uh, for the favorite thing, uh, favorite song right now. Do you have one? Favorite song. Favorite song. There's so many. 
Let's say the unguided um, how it was legendary, for example. Okay. Um, the best calisthenics event you've ever visited? In 2015, one uh, competition in Bulgaria. But which uh, it wasn't like international, but for us, it was something really great. Because uh, if we do a lot of statics, if you're one of the um, you're, if you're one from the one of the countries with the best ethics in the world, yeah, in your country would be that event. Okay. That's something that I also wrote down. Why does Bulgaria have so many strong athletes? Well, why do you think is it like, is it the culture? Is it the genetics? Is it uh, the, the, the mindset, the hardworking mentality? What is it? Um, I think, uh, mindset the mindset moreover then everything goes um i remember when i started um so um at the first competition when i went i was seventh from 38 participants but i wanted to do it better so in the next competition i was uh, second with uh, chances for the first place but um yeah that's another topic um we have a really um strong sense for uh to be competitive there. Okay. Cool. And the last question for this interview, what's your message to the Calisthenics community? What do you want to tell the listeners? What to tell the listeners? Okay. Um, I would like to say um, everyone is different and uh, don't try to be a copy of uh, someone else. Try to find your own style and to develop it. Even if you don't know your strong sides, there are such a sides. So just trying to find them and try to try to work only uh, not only on them, but and to your weaknesses as well. Because uh, if you want to compete, for example, on a statics competition, uh, there is something like completeness for which judges are judges are looking for uh, another thing uh, don't, from don't be a copy it's um, uh, courage the other guys who are trying to make something uh, which uh, for them it's something big I mean don't try to discourage them because I'm seeing uh, a lot of comments in the Instagram network and uh, when someone is trying to reach something and he's trying to make the better of himself and they're like, no, that's not a thing. Uh, here, this, this, this. But that is not a um, constructive way to say to the people uh, how to fix uh, uh, their way of uh, training, how to fix uh, their elements. Uh, they're just trying to, to push them back. Uh, and when I see some kind of uh, comments, I'm trying to to uh, take part in the comments and to say, "Look, this is not right," and you please try to avoid try to avoid this because wow. uh, we're trying to be a big family after all. But yeah. sometimes that's not happening. True. True. If I can add something to that, because it's also something that is really, really important for me, uh, not only personally, but like also with coronation, is um, that I really feel that some people also take the, the perfect form thing too serious and uh, like that they hate too much on, on the form of somebody and like um, people are not allowed to post something with training form or something from from their workout, something spontaneous anymore because everybody is feared that he will now be hated because of the form it also goes a little bit into this direction of what you just said but i think this is something that can really slow down the the growth of our sport if the family is not holding together but there is the they they tear apart by the form by the hate by 
making fun of beginners because everybody started it somehow. I think like um, your muscle ups in the beginning also didn't uh, always look that clean mine neither. So like, it's really important that uh, you respect that. And that's, you said yeah, that perfectly. Do this perfectly from the very, from the very beginning, but um, that's not only, um, you said the form. Yeah. That's one really interesting because some guys are trying to put some standard for the form at all, but there is not something like a standard. I mean, this uh, freestyle, this uh, free sport, um, you shouldn't put a standard on or something like that. Okay, protraction. Okay, protraction is useful. Okay, I I cannot disagree. Uh, you have better control, uh, easier presses, and uh, it's easier for um, a longer combo. Okay, but uh, you cannot say your planche it's uh, not clean, for example, because I might not like the hollow body, for example. I might like uh, another form, but that doesn't mean I cannot do it. I just don't like it. Everyone has his own preferences. That's it. I think you summed it up perfectly fine. Um, that's something that um, I'm really happy that you talked about it because uh, as I said, it's something that's really important if we want to grow the sport, if we want to make it uh, even bigger and like um, allow more people to to live from it, to um, be able to work on it full time, et cetera, et cetera. And this is something that uh, just slows it down. And um, yeah, as you said, like um, the sport is quite young still and uh, there are people like uh, putting standards um, for the plant form and set, et cetera. And uh, yeah. I mean, you said it. So, um, yeah, Joran, um, how can people get in touch with you? How can they, where can they find you? We will put all the links in the description, but uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, my, okay, find me in my uh, Instagram profile, Joran Stanche, and um, via my email, which it's uh, right on, in my um, Instagram profile also, and uh, with Facebook. Cool. That's perfect. We will put all the links in the description below. Also, if somebody is interested in getting his uh, individual plan from you to um, be able to progress faster and to have somebody who is like um, looking from the outside and to make sure that you, somebody is not overtraining, that somebody is progressing right. Um, you also do video analysis, right? Um, yeah, if, some, if somebody it's... Um not able to understand everything by its own, by um, everything I wrote in the routine. Yeah, we're making a video course. Cool. Sounds really nice. Thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks a lot for, for all the insights uh, that you that you gave uh, for the injuries, for the planche, for your planche. Um, yeah, progressions that were for you. That's also something that I um, never thought about, which definitely makes sense. Um, so overall, really insightful interview. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, before you can end the episode, uh, Jordan, I want to say thank you to everyone listening to this till the end it's uh, been an interview again uh, around an hour and i'm always super happy if somebody is listening to this till the end so big big thank you to you listening to this and uh, if you want to support the series we are super happy if you give it a thumbs up and uh, yeah apart from that stay healthy and you're done you can have the last words uh first of all thanks uh, for the opportunity to invite me to talk there you really appreciate that thanks uh, like you said to everyone who is for watching uh, this video and um, yeah, I'm glad I was there to talk with you. <laughs>